Do you ever wish your DAW could listen to what you're doing and take on some of your basic mixing chores? Like writing a bunch of automation to make sure a certain element sits within the mix? That would be awesome, right? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I keep telling my grandma. Reaper is here for you. Hey, how's it going? Today I want to show you one of Reaper's most powerful features. Now, if you're familiar with sidechain compression, this is very similar to that. Except with sidechain compression, we're basically using one signal to generate the gain reduction curve of another signal. And what we're doing today follows a similar principle and workflow, except that we can use that signal to automatically adjust any parameter on any plugin. <laughs> so if all that sounded a bit like gibberish, let's just listen to an example. So as you can see right here, the rate knob of my Eventide undulator is jumping around. And this isn't happening randomly, but based on my dynamics. The louder I play, the faster the rate gets. And as I play more softly, the tremolo slows down. So let's get into how I made this. Obviously above and beyond this one effect, what I'm about to show you will hopefully open a whole new world of possibilities. So let's get into it. So I have a guitar track right here with an amp sim feeding into the Eventide undulator. The undulator is kind of like a modulated tremolo effect. So let's hear it as is. I can adjust the speed. And say I want this to be faster when my chords begin to hit and then slow down later. Well, I can always go up here to param, show track envelope, and I can write a wee bit of automation on it. But what I want to do is to play this sound live. So let's clear this envelope and we'll float our plugin and I'll just give this parameter a little wiggle and I'll go up to param and click on parameter modulation slash MIDI link right here. We get this window and there are three options here. Today, I'm just gonna show you the top one, audio control signal sidechain. So tick that box and we get this window. So first thing to set is this track audio channel. So I'm just gonna choose one, two. And now we can kind of think of it like this. Our rate parameter right here is now listening to our signal and it's gonna to react to it how we tell it to. Now, in order to see what's going on, you have to actually play the track. And the moment we do, this value is gonna change. Check it out. Now for a moment, let's bring the strength all the way down and we can set our baseline. This is kind of the value we want for our parameter when nothing is playing through the channel. So here I'm just gonna move the baseline somewhere I like. And now once I bring the strength back up to 100, you can see this line kind of start to move up and the rate knob on our plugin starts to move as well. But right now it's not really doing a lot. So next we have to also set our minimum and maximum volume to the range of our incoming signal that we want to react to. So actually the bottom of my range looks good. If anything, I can bring it down a little more. But as you can see, this green little dot isn't really making it to the top of our curve. So let's bring down the max volume too. And basically what you want from this stage is to get a healthy amount of movement as the dynamics of your signal fluctuates. Up here you also have attack and release. So I like both of these, in this case maybe a little faster. And finally strength just scales the whole amount of modulation. So at zero it's disabled. Now it's just going to like 20% of what it used to be before and so on. In this case I'm completely fine with the full strength. Additionally, we can control this curve. So maybe we don't want this value to kind of change linearly. I kind of want it to slow down a little quicker, but this is not the same as adjusting the release. This just means softer dynamics will reduce the parameter more than harder ones increase it. So hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, I can just grab this line and if I move it this way, the drop will now happen faster. 
And that sounds pretty good to me. Of course, sound design is just one of the many ways we can use something like this. And it's also really useful for kind of automating certain really time consuming kind of chores that you have to do while you're mixing. So why don't you watch an ad while I load up another project? See you back here soon. All right, so here it is. This is my new single I just released. I have my vocal track over here and that's sending to this track down here. And I have another eventide effect, this time black hole. And I have already done some parameter modulation on it. But let's bypass that for a second by clicking here. And let's just hear the reverb without any modulation. Let's get the fuck out of here. And we'll be on the road. All right, so I like the sound of the reverb, but right now it's just hella extra. It's really kind of affecting the intelligibility of the lyrics and it's just kind of washing over our dry sound a little bit too much. So one thing that a lot of people do is that they sidechain compress the reverb using the dry vocal signal, which is completely legitimate. But with parameter modulation, this is made a little bit easier and as you will see a little more versatile as well. So now let's enable this modulation. This is being applied to the output gain of my reverb right here. And once again, I've set my baseline to where I want it to be when no audio is going through. So at that point, the output of my reverb is just set to unit again. But this time I've chosen the direction down here to be negative. So in the last example, we had this value be positive. So the parameter value increased with our audio signal and vice versa. But now I want it so, so as the vocals get louder, my reverb actually goes down. And then when the vocals get quiet, the reverb comes back up. So it's otherwise the same procedure as before set your maximum minimum volume. This time the strength is a lot lower. I don't want to completely like eliminate my reverb while Leah is singing. I just want to kind of reduce it. And my attack and release amounts this time are quite slow. Let's give this a listen. Let's get the fuck out of here. And we'll be on the So the reverb now just stays out of the way of our vocals. And as the vocal phrases end, we get more reverb to kind of bridge the gaps. So the reverb basically mixes itself. Awesome. Now, so far, we've only used the audio signal from the track to adjust something on a parameter on that same track. But we can also use a signal from any track to affect the plugin on any other track. For example, later in verse two of this song, I have drums and they're all sending to this delay that's creating this kind of like a pan filtered delay effect. Sounds kind of fun. And now let's hear it in the mix. So I feel like as the vocals come in, there's just too much happening in the mix and the delay is just getting in our way. I can always go to any of these plugins and adjust their output gain, but not all plugins have a gain parameter like that. So alternatively, you can just use something like the JS Pan Smoother, just as an extra output gain parameter at the end of my chain to do the same thing. And this comes with your install of Reaper, so you should have it. This time before we do anything, let's click on the routing icon for this track and add a new receive. I'm gonna take this receive from my vocal bus which places it right here. And I want to send from one and two on my vocal bus to new channels on this receiving track, channels three and four. And I want this set to unit again. So of course this doesn't affect the sound that we hear on this track. As you can see, all of these plugins have two ins and two outs. So they're still just going to receive channels one and two and they're just gonna output channels one and two as well. So the sound of my vocal bus won't go through this track, but we can now have parameters on this track listen to that signal. So you know the drill, wiggle wiggle, Click on param, zoops, parameter modulation, bloinks, and one more time, choose the audio signal, bloops. And you probably guessed it, this time we choose tracks three and four to listen to. So now this volume parameter will be listening to our vocal performance. 
set the baseline, which in this case, the default value matches our plugin default, point to stock and JS plugins, and direction again will be negative, so our delay is reduced as the vocal level increases. And now as again here, whenever the vocal comes in, this is turned down. And now our nice little delay kind of allows the vocals to take the lead, but then once the vocal goes away, it comes back in. Soups, nice. Now if just volume reduction is overkill, we can do a similar thing with a more focused EQ. So instead of the pan smoother, I can just bring in an EQ. And let's place a wide band filter here somewhere. Give its gain parameter a wiggle this time. Repeat the last process. Select three and four to listen to. Set everything else up. And now the EQ will do a little bit of this. So it's reacting to the vocals and because of the gentle cue, it's really not creating that like very kind of audible, synthetic sounding filtering effect. It's just very smoothly bringing down the frequencies that may get in the way of our vocals. So it's just a more subtle variation of what we did earlier. And this is of course a lot more versatile than just sidechain compression. And you can even do this in reverse, you know, give it a little extra low end or whatever it is that you want. Now, a couple of final tips. First, once you have a bunch of parameters that you're modulating, it's gonna be a few steps to get back to them every time to adjust them. You click here and then you click here and you open this window, but you can set a hotkey to this action show parameter modulation slash link for last touched effect parameter. For me, that's control command and F. So I can just touch this, hit the hotkey and shablamo. Finally, you can write this stuff as automation to just fine tune afterwards. So wiggle this and this time choose show and track envelope. And we get this envelope here. Now I can put this track into write mode and just press play. As you can see, these values are being written. Now that I have this written, I can disable my parameter modulation. I can maybe run this action, reduce number of points in half. So that'll be a little easier to work with. And otherwise I can just do all kinds of fine tuning and really kind of get into the weeds. But obviously we achieve the bulk of our automation kind of automatically, instead of doing it manually like some kind of Pro Tools user. Oh! So very powerful feature. Obviously, these are just examples. The only limit to how you would use this is your imagination. So I hope you get to use it and do share with the class if you came up with any cool effects or mixing tricks. Now we will cover LFO modulation in a future video as well as this last option. Though I should say that I do have another video that covers a more kind of robust custom scripted version of this, the MPL mapping panel. So I'll put a link to that up there or down there and all over the place. Take care of yourselves and I hope to see you very soon. Bye.